Hey guys, and thanks for tuning in to Trade Chat. My name's Panzer, and today I'm going to be doing a compilation video of all of my videos that I've done so far about Patch 4.3, which is releasing November 29th, 2011. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you aren't subscribed already, I would love it if you'd do so. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. So the big news is that Patch 4.3 in World of Warcraft will be the patch that brings us a raid where we will be defeating Deathwing. So with this patch, they'll be debuting three new five-man raids, and they're not revamped they are new they will have their entrances in the caverns of time so as you guessed you do a little bit of time traveling the first five man is called end time and in this instance players will actually be given a glimpse of the future if deathwing is not defeated the second instance is called the well of eternity and players will be brought back in time specifically to the war of the ancients to help thrall recover dragon soul to use against deathwing the third new instance is called the hour of twilight and in this instance the players will actually escort thrall through the worm temple and end in a location of the final battle against Deathwing. These three five-man instances will lead up to the new raid Dragon Soul, which is the raid where Deathwing will be featured. There are eight bosses in this raid, although bosses seven and eight are both Deathwing. The Deathwing battle in Dragon Soul is so intense that it's actually broken up into two separate encounters. Um, the first part of the Deathwing fight is actually takes place in the air and players jump off of gunships with parachutes and shoot at him and fight him mid-flight. You try to get his armor off so that he is exposed and obviously easier to hit. And if you can make it through the flight aspect, which is its own fight itself, then you will land in the maelstrom for the final encounter and hopefully the demise of Deathwing. If you're awesome enough to defeat Deathwing in the Maelstrom, you will be given a mount reward and Deathwing will only drop weapons as loot. Also in the Dragon Soul raid, we will see the introduction of epic gems. Each of the eight bosses will drop a geode for each player and when you open the geode, there is a chance that there will be an epic gem. There's a way, way better chance that it will be a rare gem, but there's still a chance at an epic gem. Also with patch 4.3, we'll see the introduction of the looking for raid system and it's been announced that the looking for raid system will actually be at a lower level of difficulty than regular so they'll be looking for group than regular than heroic um, and this is supposed to be like an introductory tool to raiding rather than your primary form of raiding this is supposed to like prep you to kind of learn the fights in an easier lower stress environment than when you're going in with people on your server whether it be in a pug or a guild run um, there will be entirely different loot and achievements that go with the looking for group raids um, and all of the mechanics will be similar but easier um, and I think this is a necessary evil with the looking for raid tool because there will probably be a lot less communication and teamwork with a cross realm pug you may not even be able to use like I mean if nobody has a vent you might not even be in that sort of like you can talk to each other's situation so I do think it's necessary for them to make it easier I just hope it's not like stupid easy. <laughs> there'll be 25 man raids and they'll be composed of two tanks, six healers, and the rest DPS and the the finder will attempt to like make the groups eclectic so that you're not like sharing gear with every single person and there'll be like a good mix of melee and ranged. Uh, they also said that they would attempt to group you with people on your own server but not at the cost of higher queue times. Loot in the looking for raid system will be a slightly lower eye level than loot in other raids um, although if you do get a tier piece the the set bonus will work with the higher eye level pieces. It's going to be on a need before greed, but based on the loot type that drops. Um, and what I mean by this is if somebody rolls need, anybody who rolls greed is automatically out of the running. And let's say it's a tank item that drops. Anybody who queued up as a tank for that raid will automatically have 100 added on to their roll if they roll need. Any of the DPS will just get their regular roll. So let's say a DPS rolls need on this tank item and they roll a 98. One of the tank rolls a 13 and the other one rolls a 2. The tanks actually rolled a 113 and a 102, so even though the one guy only rolled 13 and the other guy rolled high 90s, the guy with the 113 is totally going to get it. This is to prevent a DPS from rolling need on a tank item and ninja-ing the item. This will also work for healing items or DPS so that a tank can't ninja a DPS piece and a healer can't ninja a DPS piece and vice versa. Also with this expansion we'll be seeing the addition of transmogrification and void storage. Um, what transmogrification is, is you can take a piece of gear that you are currently wearing and you can make it look like a piece of gear that you own but are no longer wearing. Um, it's really cool because it retains the stats of the original items. You can roll around looking like you're wearing like T2 and actually be wearing T12. Um, you do have to have the original item in order 
Like if you, <laughs> if you want item A to look like item B, you have to have both of those items. You can't just like pick from a list. Um, and if like say you deleted tier gear in the past, you can't get it back. Um, you will have to go regrind it. They already said like don't put in a petition because you're just wasting everybody's time. <laughs> they weren't even like nice about it. Like that's pretty much how they worded it. Um, they said they will be looking into ways to bring back gear that is no longer obtainable, whether it be from original vanilla raids or from the Death Knight starting area. Don't expect it right off the bat, but in the future they will be working on something like that. With the introduction of transmogrification in patch 4.3, the reforging vendors hit will actually be removed from the game and the transmogrification vendors will be capable of reforging your gear. So when 4.3 comes and you go to reforge, you'll do it at the transmogrification vendor, not the reforger, because he won't be there anymore. <laughs> to complement transmogrification is void storage, and void storage is not meant to be like a secondary bank. What it is, is it's a permanent or long-term storage system. Um, this isn't where you're going to put like your flasks and your potions and your offset of gear. This is where you're going to put your old tier gear, your holiday items, your you know, the nostalgic pieces that you don't really use much, like your lovely dresses and stuff like that. Um, I, I am a sucker for holiday quests, so I have a lot of this stuff cluttering up my bank, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, void storage is a pretty cool idea. It does, when you store gear in void storage, it removes all the gems and enchants, which is why you don't want to store current gear in there, because you'll be out probably hundreds, if not thousands of gold. It's only going to be 100 gold to purchase, 25 gold to deposit, and it'll be free to withdraw. They're also adding this super sweet search field so that you can find things in your inventory, your bank, or even your void storage. Uh, they'll also be revamping the Dark Moon Fair. There'll be an island you can go to with activities, including something called whack a -Nol. So it sounds like it'll be very carnival-esque. Um, hopefully they'll do something with it, because right now the Dark Moon Fair is fairly useless unless you're turning in cards. So I'm really excited to see what they could potentially do with the Dark Moon Fair. In 4.3, you'll receive 150 Valor points for each random Cataclysm Heroic that you complete, and you can do this seven times per week. Also, you'll no longer be ro lo rocked. <laughs> also, you'll no longer be locked out of instances when you do a random heroic. Uh, you'll only be locked out if you actually queue up for that instance by itself, which is a pretty cool change. Also, with the random raid looking for raid finder, um, it's weird because the bosses are not actually going to drop Valor points. Instead, you'll get 250 Valor points upon completing the Looking for Raid, and you can do this two times a week for a cap of 500. The Valor point cap in Patch 4.3 will be 1,000, and they're also updating the Valor vendor so that they'll be dropping, well, not dropping, but selling eye level 397 epics. In patch 4.3, they'll be making some changes to ZA and ZG so that you only have to complete two out of four of the initial bosses in order to summon the final boss. Aside from the new five mans and the new raids and transmogrification in 4.3, we'll also see some really minor changes that kinda are weird. Like in patch 4.3, in North American realms, you'll no longer be able to use special characters in your character or guild name. Although, if you already have the characters, you'll be unaffected. Um, I don't know if the reason for this change is that people just got out of control with like every single one of the letters in their name was like a crazy letter. I don't know what it was. Um, but again, if you already have a special character in your name, it's unaffected. You just won't be able to use it anymore. So I guess if you wanted a character with a funny slash O or something like that, make it now because you won't be able to make it in a couple months. In 4.3, we'll also see some nerfs to high level leveling. Um, in Outland and Northern, many of the group quests have been retuned so that they're easily done solo. Also also, many of the dungeon quests in Outland and Northern, rather than having to pick them up in various questing locations, they've actually moved the pickup location for those quests to just inside of the dungeon, so that when you're queuing up, it's a lot easier to get and complete those quests. And also, in Northern, level 71 to 80, they have nerfed the amount of experience that you need to level by 33%. Um, so my Warlock, who's sitting at level 68, is not going to be leveled until 4.3 because it'll be faster and easier in Northrend is quite a grind. Northrend is, is not a very fun place to level in my opinion. The only place I really like is like Shalazar Basin. Everything else is like, 